So hello everyone, Ether Song here, and today I'm going to be playing Dungeon Drafters, a new dungeon crawling deck builder game that came out. Looks like fun. Just gonna do a new game. Let's go through this. Until a fifth appeared, the false archetype traded from envy, a stranger, wanted to destroy the world and decay it back to formless chaos. The four archetypes, along with their 12 saints, went to war with the stranger to protect their newly built world, but they couldn't defeat it. They only managed to seal it alongside with its chaotic and corrupting magic, with only and only with the sacrifice of the four archetypes. And thus the world moved on, with the four only remembered by the powers encoded in their magic cards towards the end of an era of prosperity. Sounds like the types of decks you'll be able to use, right? Until a young man traveled to a forgotten corner of the world of Four Corners, there he found a tower, an undiscovered place of mystery begging to be explored. Then the man found the seal of an ancient stranger, a forbidden magic from ages before, unleashed anew along with strange cards encoding its power. As the seal is broken, the magic of possibilities of chaos returns to the world, clearly opposed to the stable rigidity and orderly harmony of the four archetypes. The people of the world felt dissonance, sensing this to be a threat to everyone's way of life and to the very existence of the world of four corners. A crusade from all the four co corners was called justified with the writings of an ancient prophecy. The influence of the stranger must be sealed again. It mustn't corrupt the world order of the world lest it is destroyed and returned to formless nothing and so bold adventurers from all places travel to the isle of doom on this isle at the center of disturbances sits the imposing tower the nexus of corruption that is threatening the entire world their callings to raid that tower stop whoever beckoned its malevolent magic and return it to its ancient prison So what do we have here for archetypes? We have our characters. We got a mage. The mage goes headstrong in the battle. This is power of raider cards and the flexibility of oracle cards. The brawler rocks a bold in-your-face raider and warden deck centered around melee attacks. The monk controls the flow of battle with a puzzling and introspective warden and oracle deck. The bard strolls through challenges using her mobile and minion heavy deck that mixes Traveler and Oracle in a beautiful harmony. The Agile Shinobi storms the battle with a fast and furious Traveler and Raider deck. The Explorer has a survivalist strategy themed Warden and Traveler deck getting through battles with mobility and safety. So it looks like Raider, Oracle, Warden, and Traveler are the four archetypes. Traveler must be movement, right? I would think. Yeah, probably movement. Warden's kind of like melee or defense. Raider, I think it's like damage stuff. And Oracle's probably utility. Yeah, Raider's probably close range damage. So I'm going to go with... The Traveler and Raider deck, the Shinobi. So let's try this out. Begin game with this character. Yes. Let's get started. So we got a cutscene here. There's the Shinobi. Oh, that's a big wave. <laughs> Uh-oh. So I guess we got washed ashore. So I guess each of the characters probably has their own starting thing, or maybe it's all the same. I'm not sure. Maybe they all get kind of washed ashore in the same way. There's a tower. So this is the Isle of Doom. So what do you got here? 
Let me move the camera slightly as well. Move it around there. Okay, or I can move it maybe up. Put it up here. Okay, it's looking good. Now what do we got here? Use a WASD to move around the map. Holding a direction outside of combat will allow the character to move fast in that direction. Sounds easy enough. Press a direction against a unit to execute a melee attack against it. It works both outside and inside of combat. Try it out. Okay, so it's like a roguelike kind of thing, right? And there's my AP action point. So I guess movement usually uses one action point. I have 10 health and a library of 40 cards. Reflect one damage to close units. Flame ring. Kill. Copy up to one flame ring. Attack a target two times. Kill. Recast. So you can recast it again if you kill something. Attack units in a line. Goblin Torch. Inflict one damage and burn two in a short line. What else do we got? Gust. Inflict one damage. A ground target combat unit or three damage to a flying target combat unit. Okay, so it does more damage to flying things. So I like how you can make your own deck here. I'm not sure if I'll go... I can guess I can go through all them. There's not too many cards. But I like how you can kind of put together your own deck so you can make various strategies later on. So it looks like definitely these red ones are damage, various damage attacks. So attack units in line, it's like damage and burn two in a short line. So burning, it's like things, damage to things around you probably. Fury swipes, you can do two attacks and then keep going if you kill something. It's like three damage to a target combat unit. Teleport to target position. Okay, so you can like teleport if you kill something. That's pretty cool. Attack target combat unit and fire a phaser that inflicts burn one for each point of damage inflicted. So that sounds good. Hand slide discard target library card and draw one. Okay. And if you discard this, you also draw one. So there's like other effects for discarding cards. Gain stealth one, shadow walk, jump at target obstacle, then jump to target position. Inflict one damage in a small cross area. Volley hit, draw one. I don't know what those are. I'll figure them out as we go. And fire shot inflicts one damage, jump two tiles backwards. Fire shot that pulls the caster to the impact point, then attack any unit at that impact point. That's pretty cool. And then Shriek and Fire Shot that inflicts one damage. Teleport to target position. Initiative. Draw one, prioritizing another Shriek and gain one AP. Okay. It's all looking pretty good. So now I can look around here. I can break some of these barrels probably. I'm doing like one damage right now. Want some money. I don't know if I can destroy these. I'm not seeing much else. So we'll keep moving. During the player's turn, you can execute these actions. Move, melee attack, cast a card, and in turn. Move, melee attack, cast a card, and in turn. Okay, it's all pretty self-explanatory. Moving and executing melee attacks works as the same outside of combat, just press direction. Okay, we know that. 
to cast a card, click a card with the mouse button. Okay. To in turn before executing all your actions, hold the cancel button Q or click in turn in AP bar. Sounds good. Executing most actions will spend AP. When your AP reaches zero, your turn will end. So there's enemies here. Now I got my hand. Nice. Fire shot to pulls the caster to the impact point. So I could jump to here. Then attack any unit at the impact point. Because I can't attack it directly. I could go there and then attack one of these. Otherwise, fire shot that inflicts one damage. Jump two tiles backwards. Attack target combat unit and fire phaser inflicts one burn. Let's see, burn one for each point of damage inflicted. Okay, so I think I'm going to start by going there. Attack target twice. So I killed that. I guess I could recast it now. What's their range? So I'm outside their range. Guess I can move here. That's the end of my turn. Let's see how this goes. So I, I guess I draw one card a turn. Let's use the flame ring. How do I use it then? I just click. Nice. Killed everything. So far so good. Good. I guess I go down here. Combat loop. Combat flows in turns. First the player turn, then the enemy turn. Then neutral turn. After all units execute their turns, the combat will complete a round. During the player turn, the player will act first. Then each ally of the player will act in order from closest to the player to furthest. During enemy turn, enemies will act in order defined by their distance to the player at the start of the round. Neutrals will follow the same turn order logic. You can press the overview F to check the turn order number of every unit. Okay, that sounds good. So when I press F. So I can see what's going to be going. It's probably closest to me, to farthest is how it's going. Fire shot that inflicts one point of damage. Teleport to target position. Gain one stealth. I don't know what stealth does. Maybe I hide myself for a turn? Inflict one damage and burn. Hmm, we could move up. And do a shrieking to jump over there. Health fruit. I could kunai that. Probably take one damage from this. But there's health fruit there. Maybe that'll work. I could try that. Or I could do stealth walk at the end. Let's see how that works. Oh, it's not in range? Is it? T 
teleport to target position. Oh, and then I can jump over here. I see. And then I teleport. I thought I'd like teleported to target, but I actually go up over here. Okay. It's pretty cool. I could kill this again. And then move over here. I just keep getting more shurikens. That's <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, I think I'm... Oh, I still got my AP? Oh yeah, you get your AP back with killing with shurikens? <laughs> wow. It's pretty good. Um... But I'm kind of stuck here now, aren't I? What does the sta Shadow Lock do? Stealth 1. Can I just end a turn? I guess it just hides me for a turn? Is that how it works? Okay. I guess I'll just go up here. My turn now. So I'll kill it with this first. Is it not in range? Is it too close? Maybe it needs to be a little bit farther away. So I can just kill that. Move here. And jump over here. Okay. Nice. Everything is cleared. And that heals me. Can I attack this? No. Alright, everything is looking good so far. Effects. Certain cards and monsters inflict effects. These are varied conditions that persist for many turns and can either be positive buffs or negative buffs. When the player is affected by an effect, he will draw an effect card. The effect card has its own rules and describes how that effect works on the player. As an effect card is a card, it can be cast as with any other card. When the player casts all cards that same effect, they will remove that effect from them. So I guess you can remove the effect by casting the ones that got put on you. When you find cards that inflict effects, try to experiment with them on enemies and yourself. There's, the results might be really useful on your adventures. How much health does this thing have? Two. Two. I can stealth. So now I'm close by. I knew where I was. I guess it saw me stealth. That's why. Cast the discard. Can't execute movement or suffer knockbacks. So I got rid of the root. There we go, killed one. They're going to come for me again. I'm going to get snared again. I think I can just kill everything, though. There we go. Can I use this, like, even out of combat? 
That's what it looks like. Alright, that gave me one health, so I still took some damage. Monster actions. Some enemies may execute complex actions that are very precise and difficult to avoid. Common slime. What is it going to do? You can inspect any enemy to check their actions by hovering the mouse on their position. This will show their basic information and the actions they will execute. You can click on an enemy during your turn to check its actions with more depth. This will draw a danger zone of tiles that enemy may attack during its turn. Remember to always check the actions and danger zones of enemies. And you will always prepare to avoid the worst. Are its actions the thing on its tile? Which ones are the actions it's going to be doing? I can see the range, kind of, right? It's going to try shooting at me. I think it's going to heal or buff or something. Oh, now I can seed bomb, it, it says, if I click it. It's going to hop. Okay. Slime bump pursuit. Burn two in a line. Maybe I can kill that. It's the range of that. Well, I could try moving up first. Say so jump twice. I burned it. Is the burn going to kill it? It's going to hop on me. I got rid of the burn, I guess. Probably used its turn to do that. Now, I saw what it was attacking. So it was it trying to attack down there? I see. So I just need to move out of the range of these things. Do another goblin torch here. I can kill this. Kill that one. That's just shooting. So that's not too much of an issue. This one's just going to run towards me. Now I can use this sword. I think this will do quite a bit to it. Jump at target obstacle, then jump to target position. So just finish it off. Probably didn't even need to use this cart. <laughs> you just finish off normally. Same with this one. Discard target library card and draw one. Nice. Finish clearing out this stuff. There's the trees. Do they have stuff here? Not seeing if I could burn the trees. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. It's looking good. So what are, what's in here? Golden? Starter? Are these booster packs or something? Getting shards. Gemstones. Let's see what these are. So 
What is this? Healing? I know ruins. Oh, I see my deck is slowly going down still? I don't know. The caster's graveyard is where library cards are discarded, discarded upon use or are forced to be discarded by other effects. Let's keep moving then. Counters and death throws. Some enemies will counter when they are attacked. These actions always happen in response to damage or sometimes heals inflicted directly by other units. Other enemies will trigger a death throw when they are killed by damage. This is a last action done before they die. Okay. Learning how to best exploit or avoid enemies' counters and death throws is a paramount for survival. So strategize accordingly and keep track of every enemy's quirks. Sounds good. So I guess I could discard something. I could kill that, right? How far is that one going to move? Not too far. So I can just move away. It's down to one. I think I can just kill it. Oh, it turns into two. Be a problem but i'm actually safe here aren't i just in my turn what's this hi i want to offer promotion of your channel viewers followers views and chat bots oh, i think i'm fine yeah <laughs> thanks for the offer though Keep moving on. Didn't take any damage, but I'll try healing here. This is a boss. Some kind of enemy here. So we know that's shooting there. And what's this one doing? It's summoning a beetle. And blinking away. Is this flying? I guess it is flying, right? So I can do three damage to it. I get close to it and then use this. Goodbye. And now I'm kind of in trouble, aren't I? Can I jump somewhere? Because I don't have any obstacles to jump to. I can just jump go away with this. Hey, how's it going? Trying out this dungeon deck crawler game. Let's see what the burn does, so just less damage, nice. Got everything. Keep moving up. So we're getting pretty far on you here. So I actually started the shrieking this time. Nice. So 
And fire shot that inflicts one damage. So if I kill something of this, I can keep going. Vault. What's that back there? Petrified monster? And these split when they die. And these hop. Attack me. Ow. It's gonna summon a beetle. A bomb beetle. Okay. <laughs> and he's teleporting away. If I kill the beetle, it'll kill both of these. I got a flame ring. That could be good too. So I could jump over there. Now I can choose where I want to go. I want to get near that summoner if possible. I'm up to 3 AP. Nice. <laughs> Maybe because I killed two things with it? I want to kill this if possible. Got to attack it twice. They're coming after me. It was shooting something. <laughs> what did it use? The swap? Or it's gonna use that? Oh, it's gonna swap itself with that? I don't know what that gust thing does either. First kill this. Where's this one going? Just hopping. Nice. So just one last thing. Let's see if I can take it out. It's just two health. If I just attack it twice, we'll die. Oh, it has two times that, so I need to kill it twice. Now it's going to attack me. It's confused. What's this petrified enemy? Do they unpetrify if I do something? I killed it. Nice. Hello there. How's it going? Oh, looks like looks like a boss. So what do we got here? That is 10 health times 3. Does that mean I have like 30 health? It's a lot of health. <laughs> so what are each of these things going to be doing? Yeah, I'm just kind of <laughs> testing out the game. Doing some streams. Need a, a couple more streams to get a affiliate on Twitch. So I'm just kind of <laughs> playing whatever I want. This game looks interesting though. I just picked it up and trying it for the first time. 
So it's kind of like a... Was it like a rogue, like a traditional kind of roguelike dungeon crawler mixed with a deck builder? Founder badge, <laughs> yeah. Working on it. Reanimate. Oh, so he's gonna start bringing everything back to life. So I want to stop him from doing that if possible. If I kill something? <laughs> Maybe I should have moved over there. I'm not in range. Um, yeah, maybe I should have moved there. I don't have any jump cards. I could discard something? Discard that and see what I get. Some fire. Could try just damaging him. Have I been liking Twitch versus YouTube? Um, I guess Twitch isn't bad. Right now I'm just kind of using it for maybe more casual streams. And then I might just keep more of the, the bigger streams on YouTube for now, but we'll have to see. Like I said before, if there's going to be like drop events for something like Blue Protocol, then I'd probably do Twitch streams for that. But otherwise, I might just use a Twitch as kind of like a secondary <laughs> casual kind of gaming area. I got two actions left, right? Two ac action points. I could burn them twice if I like stepped in here. Oh, it's gonna hit back? I think I'm gonna get hurt. I didn't read their ability. How does that work? Hands up. It's doing something. It looks painful, so I need to move out of that. And evidently it has like a counter or something. How does this work exactly? Maybe take out the hands first? It's one. He's hitting there. So I'll burn it again? Does he counter back every time? I guess it looks like he does. Oh, he killed the enemies himself. Okay, it's not too bad then. What is he gonna be doing with these? I'm scared. <laughs> so you can be like smashing. So all this area. Head slam. A hand slam, head slam, they fall. Uh, I'm scared. So I need to get out of here somehow. <laughs> Maybe I'll just run away. Let's just let's go away. <laughs> Can I do poly hit? I can just end here, maybe. Am I safe now? Oh, I see. So that's hitting there. That's hitting there. His head is hitting there. Okay. Now oh, he's moving back. Oh, he brought more enemies out. He's going to reanimate them again.
So I got my Goblin Torch, that would be nice. I don't want to use that. I don't want to attack him next to him because he looks like he damaged you back. Ancient's Gaze. What? <laughs> so what does this do? Okay, Petrify. Affected unit is instantly destroyed and becomes a stone statue prop. Affected caster will die if it has two Petrified cards in hand. Affects all units or all tiles in the room. A special effect that has no comparable room in the world. <laughs> Considered dangerous by adventurers. So I think he's going to petrify everything. <laughs> I'll probably have to get rid of that petrify card. Can I stop it with stealth? I wonder. We'll see. <laughs> Petrified. I didn't use stealth, but <laughs> I don't know if it would have mattered. So I need to get rid of the petrify. If I get two of these, I like die. Okay. Discard, reapply, petrify. Wait, so let me just try this. Oh, okay, so it doesn't do anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it does exactly what it says. <laughs> it just reapplies it. Let's burn this. So I can't let him do the petrify again. Now what's it gonna do? I've got quite a few cards. It's like three damage to target combat unit. Can I kill that? Kill, teleport to target position. Nice. One hand down. How do I stop this? Petrify. Cast the discard. Caster will die if it draws, but the discarding it draws another one. What's he gonna do? Oh, that's scary. He's probably gonna kill these. Oh, maybe I should focus on him. Killed himself because he killed one of the things. Now he's doing a slam again. Maybe I can take out his hand. Attack units in a line. That could be pretty good. Just doing his head slam. I guess that affects everything here. Attacking there too? How many cards can I draw? Maybe I'll just wait my turn for a better opportunity. What was happening up here? Oh, I killed it. And move back. I brought down the enemy. OK, 
Chester will drive, die if I draw another Petrovation card. <laughs> How do I stop it? <laughs> How do I stop him from petrifying me? Let's first try attacking him, see if that does anything. Still doing the gaze. Discarding it reapplies the petrify. <laughs> I'm scared. Curio? What's Curio? Maybe it's like a relic or something. Can I stealth to like hide? I think I might die. I don't know how to get rid of these. Petrify. Just try hiding, I guess. I don't know if it's gonna work. So after going stealthy, swap position with target unit. Maybe I'm okay? I don't know. Let's see if that hits me or not. <laughs> Did I dodge it? Maybe I dodged it with the stealth. Wow. I'm still in trouble. <laughs> Let's doing this thing again. It's a lot of damage. So it's gonna kill these. If I can work on taking out the hand, that'd be good. Attack it. Let's move up. We do another cross cut. Very safe, right? Yeah. here if I get below it maybe that's good I got four AP actually nice maybe burning this main thing would be pretty strong I would need to move too forward to be able to do that, though. Might as well burn the hand. Distinguished it, I think. 
It's like the two burning to it. It's almost dead. I brought down more enemies. Now what it's going to do? The ancient gaze again? How do I dodge it? <laughs> How do I get out of it? Can I hide? Is hiding good? Affected unit is instantly destroyed and becomes a stolen statue prop. Affected caster will die if it has two petrified cars. <laughs> Is there any good way I can do this? Is hiding an option? Doesn't look like I can hide. Last time I was able to stealth to get out of it. Maybe I can kill this to start. Jump off that to go. Hmm. Cause I can't go up there yet. Go down. I guess I go over here. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work. Do I just die? It killed me. I didn't know how to avoid the petrify. I guess the stealth. I kind of wasted one stealth by accident. Or maybe that was just like a forced death? I don't know. Maybe there's better ways to do it. Let's talk to this guy. At last, the misting castaway returns to the flock. Thou finally has met thy demise in these lands. All the other travelers in the ship also returned hither after the wreck. Worry not, child. We at, of the Temple of Stone hast a mandate to guide adventurers towards their destiny. This town is big, so thee might feel a dram lost at where to go. There are many adventurers about, and some of the supportists already set shop and barracks. Certainly many of those folks shall help thee to make it thee comfortable hither. Speak to those folk. If thee wanteth to resume thy adventures and go forth into dungeons, thee should talk to Labeth in the Crystal Plaza. The plaza is southwest from this temple. Thee should have no trouble finding it. Till now, my child, if thou ever returneth from the stone, I shall be hither to guide thee. Okay. It's doing pretty good, except that, yeah, that stone gaze is pretty hard to avoid. I guess I get out of here now. You can open the adventure guide by pressing G. Guide has all the information that might help you on your journey. The adventuring guide has three sections, gameplay, encyclopedia, and town journal. The gameplay guide has information on the major topics of the gameplay of dungeon drafters. The encyclopedia has a catalog of every card, items, monsters, and objects you find in your adventures. The town journal keeps track of important NPCs, quests, progression, and other aspects of adventurer's town. Okay. So the G, the guide. Stonekeeper, the runesmith, collector, banker. So I can get more cards and things unlocked. There's a lot of cards it looks like. System effects spell. Petrify was strong. <laughs> Not being able to discard it. 
So there's a lot of information, it looks like. Okay, that's fine. I can save now. Let's do a save. Right, so let's try exploring the town. Where do I go? Can I go this way? Or is that a wall? There's somebody down here. What's going on? Hello there. Good to see you, champ. I'm one of the masters of expedition. Sent to help with adventurers, though I wanted to try Tackle Tower myself. Unfortunately, the powers that forbid us VIPs from going to tower end up and end up corrupted by the stranger bummer. Anyway, Master Raider in the flesh. We burn things, we break things, we bring the pain for justice. That's how all Raider users should live by. Well, I've seen you just arrive, so I will not bother you. Go talk to people. The tavern is pretty lively right now. If you want to go on a raid, a dungeon, go talk to the fairy bunny at the Crystal Plaza. Imagine you're raring to go, right? If you're interested in, in mastering the raider archetype, I will be here to teach you. See you later, champ. So that's nice. So can you give me stuff? Maybe tell me to go talk more? Okay. Tower is bad news and everyone knows it, but no one seems to be rushing to raid it. Need to get stronger to be able to climb it. Master raider is right. We need to destroy the tower as soon as we can. Oh, I was wondering why you didn't return with us after the wreck. You were much tougher than you looked surviving that. What do you eat? Your exercise routine? I might be curious. Hmm, sorry you got carried away. If you're bored with the town, you can go talk to the stagecoach guy south of the Crystal Plaza. There's a bird here. I've not seen you before. If you just return from the stone, you will probably feel lost around here. If you go west past the bridge, you will arrive at the Crystal Plaza. There's a guide made in there and also the stagecoach to take you to dungeons. Okay. There's also stuff up here. Who are you? Scholar, the Glacial Library is a treasure trove of tomes. We think that it possibly houses a copy of every book ever written. Master Oracle is correct. Maybe we shouldn't raid the tower and risk undoing the isle before finishing our research. There's a lot of NPCs here. Cleric, this island is full of mysteries. It's a shame that corruption is spreading. Otherwise, this would be a treasure trove of knowledge. I hope the island remains if we reseal the stranger. And who are you? Being a scholar of history of the four, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to come with this expedition. There are many things we don't know about the seal of stranger and events that happened ages past that made it necessary. And who are you? We need to catalog every object we find in these dungeons for further research. Without this knowledge, we can better prepare our further expeditions. It's a lot of people trying to get more knowledge and things. These dungeons still hold many mysteries. We need to study them before venturing for real. And who are you? The lost one returns. A journey without end. We walk as warriors. Can I get more things unlocked? The book, a talking tome? It is more likely than you, than you think. Hey, don't be surprised. You may call me the book. I'm a companion book stylist. Hee <laughs> hee. So do you want to change the looks of your companion tome? I can do that for you. Oh, you can change the looks of it? I guess I'm fine right now. <laughs> I don't think I have like any money. And who are you? Greetings, adventurer. You are the unfortunate castaway, correct? I'm one of the archetype made masters sent to guide adventurers on expedition. Evidently, I'm the oracle master. I'm always willing to tutor new apprentices, and it might be a new opportunity for yourself to be under my wing. I can teach you a lot about the ways of the Oracle. But for now, since you have just arrived, you should at least get used to adventuring in the aisle before concerning yourself with my tutelage. You should head to the Crystal Plaza. So I guess everyone's trying to send me that way. Southwest of here to reach the stagecoach. He can take you to many dungeons found in the aisle. Aside from the tower, there are four dungeons to interact uh, of interest. And they seem to hide a guardian related to an archetype. They seem to influence a tower in some way, but we still don't know the exact details. That's where adventurers like yourself come in. Go there and investigate it. Sounds good. What's this? I don't know. Is there like a map? 
I guess G would be like a map, right? So there's a crystal plaza. There was this tower. I guess down here I can change maybe the deck and things. There's this collector and a banker. Okay, I'll keep exploring a little bit. And what's this? Can I look through this? As a tower looms in the distance, you remember the Astrolope Saint and her sign. You feel a slight warmth as you think about the sign. It's pretty cool. So that's the tower I'm trying to go towards. Hop my way over here. Because I can shift to run. I was in the same ship as the old man and let me tell you, his game is really fun and addictive. Can't wait for him to set up a game corner so I can play some rounds. What's he going to be doing? Hey, I'm still setting up my game corner over here. Come back later. I have a really fun game for adventurers to try out. Sounds good. And who are you? Hello, my eyes are up here, dear. Haha, <laughs> just messing with you, dear. Should I go to Collector first? Who are you? Scavenger. Hello, new blood. Welcome to Scavenger Ventures. If you want new curios, I'll be your guy. My service works like this. You fund a scavenging venture and I'll go somewhere around the world to explore. More likely, I'll come back with a curio. The curio will be yours, of course. Oh, and also a venture will require resources for my voyage and exploration. The more dangerous the venture, the more prepared I need to be. The more prepared I need to be, the more expensive it gets. On the upside, the more dangerous place I'm scavenging, the better curios I might bring back. Dangerous places are less explored and have more goods lying around. Simple as that. I'm still setting up everything, however, so please come back at a later time if you sponsor a venture. Meanwhile, I recommend you collect some shards to afford my services by exploring dungeons. Just go down the stairs to the plaza and talk to the fellow Labbit in a nice attire. He's a stagecoach, a specialist in talking, taking adventurers to dungeons. Until then, adventurer. Sounds good. Which? Oh, I haven't seen you there. I was lost in thought for a second. It hasn't been very long since I started adventuring, and now this isle and tower appears. All my life, I wanted to discover I was a returner and become an adventurer, but now I'm a little scared. Give her words of encouragement? Yes. Well, thank you. Your words were kind. I will take them to heart. Still, I have a bad feeling about all this. Maybe... We all do, but my heart is so filled with doubt. I wonder how much others would agree. Thank you, regardless. I hope to talk to you again, friend. There's a lot of other people here. I'll just keep moving. There's some stuff down here I wanted to check. Can I, like, change my cards here? Who are you? Collector. I paid a handsome sum to come with this expedition. I can't pass on the opportunity to keep most complete collection ledger in the world. So I guess he collects cards. Maybe he'll have something ready for me later. Packs. What are these? No boosters in collection, so I don't have anything yet. I have my deck. But I don't think I really can edit it yet. So it's probably about just going into the dungeon and getting more stuff to start. Looks like they're still setting up a lot of things. I don't know how the bank works exactly. Welcome. Sorry for the inconvenience, but we're still fine-tuning our experimental booster manipulator. But be assured that our revolutionary service will be available for soon for general population. Yeah, okay, okay. We'll go to the dungeons. That's where they want us to go. Or sit over here. How do I get down? Oh, there's stairs. I missed them. There we go. I think I get, oh, I talked to that dude, I think. The rabbit. 